During your private pilot and commercial pilot check rides, you'll be given a scenario and asked to create a flight plan. As part of that planning, you must prove that you understand and are able to utilize various performance charts and tables provided by the manufacturer to ensure that you can safely make the trip. It's tempting to rely on tools like uh, ForeFlight to let you know when you're exceeding the aircraft limitations. And given the right information, these tools can make estimating performance very quick and very easy. However, area of operation number one, task F, skill number two of the private pilot ACS specifically states that you must demonstrate use of the appropriate airplane manufacturer's approved performance charts, tables, and data. So your pilot examiner is going to expect that you can show your work manually. Today, we'll look at how to use what I call runaround performance charts to determine takeoff distance. Plus, if you stick around to the end, I'll give you some bonus information. So let's jump into the scenario. You and two friends like to visit obscure state parks. This morning, the three of you flew an Archer 3 from Provo, Utah, KPRV, to West Desert Air Park, UT9, to visit Camp Floyd State Park in Fairfield, Utah. Since two of you are pilots, you flipped a coin to see who would fly which leg. Your friend won the toss and flew the morning leg, and you are flying the return leg this afternoon. As you look at the airport information, you learn West Desert Air Park sits at 4,890 feet MSL and has a 2,600 foot paved runway. Based on previous work, you know the airplane and passengers weigh 2,460 pounds. Current weather shows the temperature is 34 degrees Celsius, winds are three knots right down the runway, and the altimeter setting is 30.05. Let's find out if we'll be able to safely take off and head back to Provo, or if we'll need to find something else to do in lovely Fairview, Utah. First, let's read the takeoff procedures description in Chapter 4 of the POH to get a feel for our options. Then, we'll use that information and the runway description to determine which takeoff chart to use. We know the runway is a paved strip and there are no tall obstacles at the end. Since there are no obstructions, we'll use the Flaps Up Takeoff Ground Roll Performance Chart. Looking at that chart, you'll notice that we start with outside air temperature and pressure altitude. We discussed calculating pressure altitude in a previous video. I've put the link above and in the description below if you'd like to watch that video. Using that process, I calculated the pressure altitude to be 4,760 feet. For safety, we'll round pessimistically to 5,000 feet MSL. Using our chart, find where 5,000 feet and the current temperature of 34 degrees Celsius meet. Now, draw a horizontal line all the way to the next section of the chart. The next section uses weight. To provide a margin of error, we'll round 2,460 pounds pessimistically to 2,500 pounds. So, draw a vertical line at the 2,500 pound point on the grid. Then, starting at the horizontal line drawn before, parallel the weight references until we get to 2,500. Where these two lines cross, draw a horizontal line all the way to the wind reference. Finally, draw a vertical line at the three knot point on the graph and draw a line from the previous horizontal line, paralleling the wind reference until it crosses that three knot line. Draw a horizontal line all the way to the right of the chart. This line indicates our estimated takeoff roll distance, and in our case, it appears to be 1,900 feet. So, provided we line up close to the end of the runway and perform the takeoff as described in the POH, we'll be able to safely take off. In fact, we'll have 700 feet to spare. <laughs> we can make it! But what if construction work is being done and there's a 45-foot crane at the departure end of the runway? Does that change our ability to safely take off? Well, because of the obstacle, we'll need to use a different performance chart. This time, we'll use the FLAPS 25-degree takeoff performance chart, the one with the 50-foot barrier. However, the estimation process will be exactly the same. Using the same process shows that we'd need 2,750 feet to take off and clear that crane. In this case, we'll need to wait until conditions are more favorable. Looks like we've got to find something else to do in Fairfield. So there you have it. We've just demonstrated using the takeoff runaround charts to determine whether or not we're able to safely depart from West Desert Air Park. But wait, if you've made it this far, you remember that I promised you a bonus. Well, here it is. If you compare the takeoff and landing performance charts, you'll see that they look amazingly similar. 
This means that you will be able to estimate landing performance using the exact same process as takeoff performance. <laughs> How cool is that? Two skills for the price of one. <laughs> if this video was helpful, please click the thumbs up button. Also, please share this with two friends you think might be struggling with performance calculations. And finally, thank you for watching. Fly safely, and I'll see you next time.